these are axial and sagittal CT images of the level of the cervical spine in a 62-year-old male status post-trauma. This case has several findings associated with it. Notice already, scanning through the sagittals, there's pre-vertebral soft tissue swelling present. We have already a type 2 odontoid fracture here. We have a two-part C1 Jefferson burst fracture. We have a fracture through the spinous process of C4. And finally, we have a fracture through the left C7 pedicle and transverse process. These were the fractures identified on this trauma scan. It's important to note when assessing a C2 fracture, there are three types of C2 odontoid fractures. One is an avulsion fracture along the odontoid tip. That's a type 1 fracture. A type 2 fracture involves a fracture along the base of the odontoid process. And then a type 3 fracture is an oblique type fracture through the base of the odontoid fracture extending into the C2 body. The type 2 fracture is the most important fracture, which is the fracture seen in this case because of its high risk for non-union and typically may require surgical treatment. In this case, there was also retroversion and posterior displacement of the, of the odontoid fracture fragment here. We also have a two-part Jefferson burst fracture. A Jefferson burst fracture can involve two parts, three parts, or four parts. In this case, the posterior arch was preserved. We did not see a fracture here, but there was a two-part fracture here along the anterior arch here. Uh, and this represents a two-part Jefferson burst fracture. This fracture is usually a result of axial load injury. It's important also to assess stability of the transverse ligament and that can be assessed by measuring the distance between the displacement between the lateral masses of C1 to the distance to the lateral aspect of C2. If that distance from here to here is greater than 7 millimeters then that represents injury to the transverse ligament. In this case there was no such injury to the transverse ligament and, and there was no distance that was seen that was in greater than 7 millimeters. This distance here measured about 4 or 5 millimeters here. C1 or Jefferson burst fractures can be have a high association with other cervical spine fractures as in this case there was a fracture in C2, C4, and C7. Another pertinent finding in this case is that notice that there is widening of the anterior distance between the anterior intervertebral disc space at C6 and C7. This represents a hyperextension type injury. So with all these combinations combined, this patient should have gotten an MRI examination of the cervical spine to assess for ligamentous injury because certainly the anterior longitudinal ligament was compromised in this case and it would be better to assess the posterior longitudinal ligament, the transverse ligament, the ALR ligament given this degree of fractures seen here.